Hello. Just my craving my coffee because coffee. Um, I'm gonna give you guys a few minutes to come in. Like not a few minutes, maybe two, a couple. Um, because this recipe is super simple and I'm excited to share it with you today. Um, if you don't know me and you're watching either live or on the replay, my name is Ashley and I have been writing about food and recipes over at Big Flavors from a Tiny Kitchen since 2006, um, which is like ancient times. I'm like a thousand years old in blog years, but um, I'm on all the social medias at Big Flavors, Twitter is at Big Flavors Blog, and if you want to cook along with me, the recipe link is in the description. Um, I also have it in my Instagram profile. There's a link tree, and it's got a bunch of different links. This recipe is in there. If you're there live, Jennifer, um, let me know if you can hear me. Uh, should be able to, but just in case. Um, if you cook one of my recipes, I would love to see them. Tag me on social media and use hashtag at Big Flavors. I'm sorry. Use I'm Big Flavors. Use hashtag Cook Big Flavors. I would love to see what you make. I'll share them on my Instagram story. Um, it would be great. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Um, so there's a couple parts to this recipe. Um, it's called falafel spice chickpea flatbreads, and if you buy store-bought tzatziki, which is like a Greek yogurt cucumber sauce, you can, thank you Jennifer, you can, um, it can be done in like 20 minutes, maybe even less. Um, I'm going to show you a version of tzatziki that I like that was actually the reason I came up with this recipe. Um, my friend, um, my friend's family owns a, an Angus farm up in like upstate New York. Well, it's not really that upstate, but there's a whole debate on what's considered upstate and I'm not entering that. So, um, hi Rob. Um, so his, I went on, um, and hung out at his farm and they've got, they had a couple of restaurants. There was one in Tribeca in New York city and that's where I got the recipe for these, um, Greek lamb burgers and their tzatziki. That recipe is on my site. I'll add the link in the description um, when I upload to YouTube. Hi, Mike. Um, so I came up with this recipe as a way to use up some of the like gallon of tzatziki that I made. Um, it's a really good recipe. Like it's very solid. It has some ingredients that I never put in my own tzatziki. Um, but again, you can use store bought. You can just do quick Greek yogurt and cucumbers. Start together. That's fine. Also. Um, yes, tzatziki is like the best, it's yogurt based sauces and condiments are one of my favorite food groups, so I'm like super stoked that you guys wanted this recipe today. Um, I'm just going to crack my window open because it's a little hot, but if they start with the leaf blowers, I'll close them, or I'll close it. So I'm going to start this with, um, oh sorry, but quickly, back to my friend's restaurant. They have one up in, um, their farm is called Grays and Angus Acres, it's up in Ghent, New York. And they have a restaurant called Grayson, and it's this old diner that they bought, um, and they turned it into like an upscale burger restaurant. Everything is farm, like from their farm or local farms. They make their own syrups for sodas. They make their own ketchup. It's like they're ridiculous. And so I have one of their burger recipes that goes with this tzatziki on my site, and um, I need to visit them again because it's a really Hudson, New York, is a really cute town. There's a lot of fun stuff there, and I, I love it. So I'm going to make a scaled down version of their tzatziki recipe for you guys now. Um, but again, feel free to use whatever you have on hand. Let me get that recipe. Oh, wait. Quick follow up from the last video. Hudson Valley Restaurant Week ends this weekend. I'm going to go out to um, Risotto in Thornwood um, this weekend. It's owned by the brother, Kevin, of the other brother, Elmer, that owns Brothers Fish and Chips here in Ossining. And um, Kevin took over Risotto, which has been there for a long time, but he took over in like a year ago. So I'm really excited to try their menu because it looks really good. Yeah, their restaurant is fantastic. Um, Grayson, they're, and they, they love what they do. They have a special burger every day. They make amazing desserts. It's like an hour, maybe an hour and a half north of me, but it's totally worth the drive. And especially this time of year, it's beautiful here. So 
Last weekend, I went to Peter Pratt's Inn in Yorktown Heights, and it was awesome. It's my first time there. I say awesome a lot. Sorry if that bothers you. Um, I'm not sorry that it's awesome or that I said it's awesome, but um, the menu was awesome for restaurant week, and I really liked the selections that they had, and I talked to the owner, and he said they have, like, a really nice kids menu. They do, like, in, in during summer break. Hi, Carlene! Oh, my gosh! Um, this, you would like this place, Carlene. It's um, Peter Pratt's in, in Yorktown Heights. Um, they have, during the summer, he said they do, like, a big backyard, like, barbecues, um, pig roast. They let the kids run crazy. It sounds it, great. Did I freeze? Oh, okay. All right. So definitely recommend that. If you want to try it, it's still restaurant week. I'm not getting anything for saying it. I just love sharing fun local finds with you. So that's good. I'll fit my other questions for you guys for a few moments from now. I'm going to show you how to make tatsiki if you want to make your own. Again, you don't need to. Um, you can use an English cucumber, which is like the long, skinny. They're called seedless, but I mean, if you look, it looks like there's seeds in there. They're not, I know like my husband and some other people have a little bit of trouble digesting um, regular cucumbers. Sometimes it's the skin that causes it. Sometimes it's the seeds. These ones are a little easier on him. Um, and you can, but for this recipe, I'm going to peel it. Um, and I'm going to show you one of my favorite things that it took me way too many years to realize that you can do with a vegetable peeler when seeding a cucumber. If you already know what I'm talking about, you're going to be like, yes, this was one of the best <laughs> moments. Like, you know that thing, how, how old were you when you learned that you could, whatever, something that's always sitting around and you didn't realize there was something built in to make it easier. This is your, if you don't know, you're going to be like, I'm today years old. So I'm using half of the cucumber because I'm cutting the recipe in half because I don't need an entire quart of tatsiki. Not that we wouldn't eat it. Um, and then you're going to cut it in half lengthwise. So again, seedless. If you have a vegetable peeler that has this little dealie on the end of it, that is the technical name, dealie, turn it sideways, find the top of where the seeds are, and you put it in here, and then... What? Did I just hear your mind blow? Because mine was like, what? So you can just do this, and it peels out the seeds scoops them out nice and clean. The reason you're taking those out is because if they're very wet and if you have too much liquid in your tatsuki, it won't be as thick. So you can leave them in and you can drop some on the floor. That's fine. Um, so peeled, seeded. Often when I'm making um, any sort of yogurt based sauce, I'll make it in a big bowl and then I will store the leftovers back in the carton because it's already a good size, pops on, but I'm only using half of this today, so um, I'm going to use this measuring cup to mix it. I like this one because it's a Pyrex, but the reason I like it is because it has a lid, so it's like a silicone lid, and you can put it on, and it's got a couple different, like it can be sealed where this is, or there's like a little vent open, like if you want to strain pour stuff or if you want to pour, pour stuff, or strain it slightly differently. Um, you could eat a quart of tatsiki this morning. You can! If you have the ingredients, you totally can. Or you could hit up the store, and I would not judge you at all for that. Um, give your yogurt a stir of whatever kind of yogurt you're using in case there's any liquid. Don't pour it out. Oh my gosh, don't do that. I mean, do it, but don't do it. So I'm going to use about half of this container. A quart is four cups. I'm only good at math when it comes to recipes. Um, so I'm using about half. I'm not being super precise with it because whatever. Um, let's see. Feel free to pop questions in there too if you guys have them. And feel free to pop in suggestions for the next live. All right, so two cups of Greek yogurt. I use a whole milk yogurt. The one I'm using today is 5%. Usually whole milk is 4%. You can use low fat if you want. That's not a big deal. It just um, there's a lot of times added sugars in the low fat ones, so let me just make sure I don't forget anything. All right, so I'm cutting this in half. I'm going to need one and a half teaspoons of lemon juice. I'm going to use one that I 
used it with you guys a couple days ago when I made the garlicky goat cheese stuffed herb stuffed pepidus. I'm not totally measuring this, but you can. You can always add more if you want it more lemony later on. So I'm just going to cut this in planks. And the cucumber, let's see, finely diced. So you just want it pretty small. Um, when I make like raita for Indian dishes or maskiar for Persian dishes, I don't mind some bigger chunks of cucumber. Some people grate it. You could grate it if you wanted to or shred it. Um, and then it's just going to go into the yogurt. Um, if you don't have a bench scraper, it's one of my favorite tools in the kitchen. I have one that doesn't have the sides. Most of them don't have the sides, but I like this because you scrape it in and then if you tilt it a little bit, like they don't fall all over the place. So I kind of love that. Oh, fi oh, Mike says Faye is his favorite yogurt. So if you look, they tell you how to pronounce it. And I think, is this the one that John Stamos was in the commercial for? Um, uh, me and my friend were talking about John Stamos yesterday because I was having a Michelle Tanner moment, um, which in my mind whenever she was on screen was Ashley Olsen, not Mary Kate Olsen because my name's Ashley and I'm weird like that. Um, okay, I'm just cutting the rest of this cucumber. Have any of you guys eaten out for a restaurant week here in the Hudson Valley? And if so, where did you go? How was it? Be nice. If you didn't like it, just say you didn't like it. Um, but it would be good to have a little warning if you didn't like it. Um, although I know people who've had bad meals at restaurants I love. I've had bad meals at restaurants I love. So there's always like an off day. It's just sad when it's so off that you don't want to go back. Um, so this tzatziki um, recipe is from, again, from my friend, um, my friend's restaurant, and they, they have you, like, strain yogurt in a cheesecloth in the fridge overnight. I just use Greek yogurt. It's fine. You can strain it. You can strain it further if you want. Um, they recommend letting it, um, after it's strained, mix everything and let it sit together for an hour. Hi, Janine. Missing out. See if your local area has a Hudson, uh, has a, has a Hudson Valley, has a restaurant week. That would be, recommend it. Restaurant week is a great experience. Anyway. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So after it's strained and you add all the ingredients, it's best to let it sit for at least an hour or overnight. The flavors just kind of go better and better the longer it sits. All right. This is one of the ingredients in their tatsiki that made me like, if you're vegetarian, don't use Worcestershire sauce because it's got anchovies in it. Um, I've heard good things about liquid aminos. I haven't used them, but it um, a lot of times if you have something that's really, really extra tasty, you're like, what is that thing that's making it really good? It's Worcestershire sauce because I don't know what it is about it. It's just got a lot of different things. So again, since I'm doing half of the recipe, I'm only using a quarter teaspoon. So it's not enough, it's just enough to give it like a little something extra. Um, a t so one and a half teaspoons of sugar, because this is like half. And then again, I'll taste it before I use it and make sure that nothing is too sweet or too salty. Okay, so we got yogurt, lemon juice, sugar. Gotta do garlic. So they use quite a bit of garlic, obviously, because Garlic is delicious. Um, so for half, it's going to be a tablespoon finely chopped garlic, almost to a paste. So I'm also going to need two cloves of garlic for my chickpeas. So I'm going to toss this open. Let me see if you guys have any questions. Not yet, I don't think. Facebook doesn't always let me see the questions live, but um, oh, what else was I going to ask you guys? Are you interested in, I usually do a post, like a gift guide for the holidays. Last year I did like a white elephant one with like funny culinary gifts. Like there was a lot of really ridiculous things. Um, but I usually do a regular gift guide. And if that's something you're interested in a video version of this year, I could like bring out some of my favorite stuff and talk about it. Um, stocking stuffers, Christmas gifts, Hanukkah gifts. 
Friday. I want to go shopping gifts, whatever. Um, if so, I might do that on Black Friday so that you're, you have it for Cyber Monday because I am all about not leaving the house on Black Friday. I was on crutches one year and my aunt, I was up in, um, let's do the wrong halfway. I was up in Appleton, Wisconsin at my aunt and uncle's house and they wanted me to go on crutches 4 or 5 a.m. Black Friday shopping at Kohl's and I was like, just no, no, no. Um, Alright, so lots of garlic. I'm going to mince two of the cloves to go with the, um, the chickpeas. And the other ones I'm going to like really, really kind of mince them and smash them a little bit. I actually, I didn't put salt in it yet, so in the tzatziki, so sometimes if you put some kosher salt, like the kind of coarser grain on top of the um, garlic, it helps it kind of mash into a better paste. All right. So I'll keep those two. Um, when me and my husband make dishes, not this one, but whenever we make something that calls for like two cloves of garlic, we usually add one or two more and we call it the, the Italian multiplier because he's Italian and it's just, we don't shy away from garlic in my house. Um, actually, I met someone recently who had a garlic allergy, and I was just like, I don't know how, it would be so hard to avoid it out if it's an actual allergy. Alright, so I just have this, actually, do this. I'm just going to roughly, roughly chop some of these. I'm going to separate out about two cloves worth, and I'll mince them with a little salt, and then I'm going to take a good pinch of kosher salt. Put it on top of this. Let me see. Do you guys have an okay angle for this? Gifts for myself guide. Yes, please. Hi, Jennifer. Um, all right. So this has some salt in it now, and you just can kind of push down and kind of scrape it against the board. And that'll, when you do it enough, it'll get it into a paste. Um, sometimes, I feel like sometimes that works better than other times, but if you do kind of a mix of chopping and smushing. Um, and again, since we're, my family's eating this and we all like garlic, I'm not concerned if there's like a little bit bigger pieces of garlic, but some people really don't like larger pieces. So try to be conscious of that if you are making this for a group. Um, quick note about the flatbread that I'm using today. Um, when I originally made this recipe, I used regular naan uh, bread. It's like an Indian flatbread. It's not super fine, but it's pretty good. I'm going to put that in here. Um, today, I, or well, yesterday, I found these little mini ones. So Stonefire Non, that's one of the brands I really like. Their, their pitas are great, and they don't um, – hi, Katie. Oh, my gosh. Hello. Um, these ones fit in the toaster, so I'm going to try that today. If it doesn't work, I'll put the other ones in the oven. Normally, I just heat them up in the oven according to – like on here, it says if you want to bake these, um, bake at 400 degrees for one minute or two minutes from frozen. Their pita bread – is so good because you cut it in half and you put things in it and it doesn't like the bottom doesn't tear away and give out and make everything all icky if that's important to you like when I make regular falafel which I should put the link to that I'll make a note my um I love falafel my regular falafel recipe goes in it's you know patties that you pulse the ingredients you um mix it together and you fry it and then you serve it in a pita half so I got all this in here. I think I need some pepper still. And I'm going to add a little more salt. You can usually go pretty heavy on the salt with um, yogurt sauces, I find. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. I have a salt jar on my wall. I realized it might look weird. I'm like reaching into nowhere, kind of. So I'm just going to stir this together and let it hang out. Because the longer it, the longer it sits, the better. I'm using a tasting spoon as if I'm not the only one. 
and my husband that are gonna eat this, but it's good. It's actually a little sweet, so I'm gonna hit it with some more lemon. And I think even a little more salt. I'm glad to see some of you guys do the salt trick for making a paste also. It makes it easier. Have you ever chopped garlic in a food processor? It's like the fastest way to do it. You turn the motor on and you drop it down the feed chute. So you start it, you drop the cloves down, and it they hit the blade with the motors already on, and it just like scatters and it's fantastic. All right. So let's see. That was much better. All right. This is gonna hang out. Let's see if anyone else had any questions. Um, while I'm thinking of it and mincing these other this other garlic, my thoughts for next week's live are since Thanksgiving is coming up already, either two instant pot recipes. So one of the two, they can both be made on the stovetop. Also, they don't have to be in the instant pot. I just um, it's faster. Not that you don't want to sit here and chat with me for <laughs> two hours, but um, one of them is mashed potatoes, um, and then the other is a, let's see the actual name, Instant Pot Spiced Cranberry Sauce with optional bourbon that goes in, not cooked, um, just goes in at the end. I usually divide the recipe in half for it to be kid-friendly and those who don't indulge in bourbon-friendly. All right, so that was my notes for you. So let me know, um, the garlic press kind of got, I never got into the garlic press. I don't know why, I don't have anything against it necessarily. I just, you know, it seems like another gadget. I don't have room for a ton, but. All right, we're gonna go on to the chickpeas now, and I apologize, the, the space here, I can't really get a great angle on the stovetop, but I will do my best, um, and you can ask me questions if anything seems confusing. So normally I'd be preheating my oven right now. I'd already have tatsiki made so that this would be quick. So pretend at 22 minutes and 23 seconds that you're starting the recipe now. Um, so we're going to heat some oil, a little olive oil in a nonstick skillet or a regular skillet if you want. Um, and then we'll add garlic until it's fragrant, which happens pretty quickly. Um, Gonna make a note. I'm. I always go in if I can think of something. Uh, oh, it says moderate heat. So moderate means like between medium and medium high. So like my mine goes from two to ten. So I'm at around a seven. If that's helpful. Um, I don't think there's really a wrong heat that you could do this with. You just don't want to burn the garlic. So I'm opening a can of chickpeas, which are also called garbanzo beans. And there's a helicopter going by. Um, chickpeas and garbanzo beans are the same thing. I'm going to rinse and uh, drain and rinse them just to kind of rinse off the extra sodium. You can always add more salt later. Um, and get rid of starch. I don't think it's like that key to this recipe, but you definitely at least drain them. So, got those there. Um, gonna add the oil, and gar our oils in, add the garlic about 30 seconds, then we'll add the chickpeas and some spices. I'm using cumin, coriander, paprika, salt, and pepper. Um, not using smoked paprika in this recipe, but smoked paprika is delicious. And as a side note, I um, once bought, this is like a regular, like regular paprika. Um, I once bought, half sharp paprika, Hungarian, and I thought it was just gonna be a little bit different. It is very spicy, so watch it if you use that. Okay, so as soon as this starts smelling like garlic, I'm gonna add my chickpeas and spices, and I need a half teaspoon each of cumin, coriander, and paprika. If you're ever using a British or English United Kingdom recipe, and it calls for coriander, and it says like cut, uh, chopped, minced, whatever. It's talking about cilantro. That's what they call cilantro. 
sometimes that's a little confusing. So chickpeas are going in with the garlic and a half a teaspoon of paprika, half a teaspoon of coriander, and a half teaspoon of ground cumin. Um, coriander and cumin also come in the seed form, but you want to use the ground one. I can show you the difference, like coriander. So this is ground coriander. It's like real powdery and fluffy. You can get a good light on that. Oops, and I'm pouring it out. I have magnetic spice containers because I have them on a knife rack on my wall. And then that's the coriander seed. So just like little, almost like smaller than peppercorns, but um, for this recipe, just stick with canned peas or any reason not to use dried and cooked. Uh, I just never have. Um, I've actually been meaning to try cooking them in Instant Pot and I haven't yet. Um, please do try that and let me know how it goes. Um, I'm sure it would be fine. It's a pretty forgiving recipe. You could even, if you didn't like chickpeas, you could probably use white beans or black beans. Um, so that was coriander. This is cumin or cumin. Um, find the light. So this one's a powder, and then that's what the seeds look like. The seeds are a little like, let's see, they're little kind of long things. Um, a lot of Indian recipes use toasted whole spices, and they're delicious. All right, so I've got those couple spices in here, and just some salt and pepper. And these really only need to cook until they're heated through, so it, it happens really quickly, but just a few minutes. You can see, I'll show you what it looks like so far. Like, so they're just kind of coated in the spices, and it smells ridiculously good. I think cumin and coriander and, and paprika are some of the best spices to have um, in your pantry if you don't have a ton or you don't want to have a lot they really they're great for like Mexican dishes Indian dishes Middle Eastern Mediterranean um, I really like them so while those are sauteing and let me know if the fan is too loud and you can't hear me let me know um, you can do dry just add time to instant pot them yeah or you could could you cook from dried and freeze them I wonder um, that might be kind of cool so I'm just going to cut some garnishes, because pretty much the work is done. We're just, uh, just adding some stuff to make it look pretty and taste good. I mean, you can use whatever garnishes you like. I often will save, I don't always do with onions because I use so many, but you can save your little vegetable trimmings. Um, you put them in a freezer bag, you keep them in the freezer. I have one, I label it stock bits, and when it gets full, I put it in either on the stove top or slow cooker or an instant pot and make stock with it. Um, make veggie stock, you can use bones and make the uh, meat stock. So I'm thinly slicing some red onion. That's one of the garnishes. Um, I happen to love raw onion. Not everybody does. If you want it to be a little more mild, you can just set it in a cup with some um, very cold or ice water. Um, for at least 10 minutes and that'll kind of take the bite off of it. Um, your breath won't be as awful. So I've got red onion. I'm going to do some lemon wedges. I guess I already cut this one in half so I'm going to do slices. Um, just kind of to squeeze over at the end. And again this recipe is on my website. Um, the link is in the description but bigflavorstinykitchen.com it's one of the most popular recipes on my site. It's very doable for weeknights. Um, cooked, cooked and frozen beans work out. Oh, awesome. That's good to know. Takes about 45 minutes plus the heat and pressure release time. Yeah, the pressure release time is always a little finicky. Ooh, that's hot. All right, I'm going to turn this off because they're already heated through. So I've got some tomatoes. I had a pretty gross tomato incident before I went live. I had two containers of tomato and I went to grab one and they like moved everywhere which was really gross. So for this I like to use grape or cherry tomatoes and you can cut them in half for quarters. Um, 
just because we're going to sprinkle them on top. But you can also, I got this tool a while ago from um, Oxo Tot. It's a little, like, it's got this plunger. It's meant for grapes. I use it for tomatoes. Let me see if I can do this in a way that won't squirt tomato juice everywhere. So you can see. So you load it up. You could do olives, grapes, whatever. All right, and then, and then it quarters them. It's great for if you have kids. It, I think it was designed for if you have kids and um, you want to quarter the stuff so that they don't choke. I'm just moving this off the heat even though the heat's off so that it doesn't continue to cook too much. Um, so yeah, this is a pretty quick way to do it. I like doing this when I'm making like a, have a caprese pasta salad with um, creamy balsamic on my site and I like, I gotta cut up a bunch of tomatoes for that. Um, this is a good way to do it. Um, it's good for like fruit salads, I don't know. It's definitely not necessary and I didn't, I got it for a sponsored post I did with them years ago and I didn't think I was gonna get that much use out of it but I ended up loving it and I use it quite a bit and my husband does too. And a kid can operate it which is great. Um, okay, so I've got chopped tomatoes, lemon slices, um, red onion, I rinsed some parsley and cilantro, mint would probably be good here too, um, you could just use one of the fresh herbs, you could do green onions, um, I'm cutting enough to make more later, but I'm the only one who's going to eat this right now, this is going to be my lunch, so I'm just going to use a little bit, but... So the garnishes I like to do are tomato, red onion, tahini, which, uh, say sesame seed paste, um, and sriracha sauce if you like things spicy. I like a good drizzle and then fresh herbs. So I'm going to try this toaster naan, mini naan. Um, let's see if it works. I actually have to turn my... I turn my toaster sideways so that I have room to cook for you guys so that you can see things because I don't have much space. So, my toaster. Try this. It does fit. All right. See, hopefully those work. Otherwise, um, you can you could even microwave them quickly if you wanted to. This says microwave. Wrap top and bottom with a paper towel, high setting for 15 seconds or 20 to 30 seconds from frozen. The, what's the tool called again? I'm totally ordering one. I have it. I'll have to check if it's not in that section of my um, my Amazon shop. I will put it in the Facebook Live section because um, I don't remember exactly what it's called. It's definitely in my product recommendations section and my Amazon shop. If you go on my website, um, bigflavorstinykitchen.com, there's a, at the very, very top right corner there's links to all my social things you'll see a little Amazon logo but um, you can go to amazon.com slash shop slash big flavors and you can find all my recommendations there and I'll make like three cents if you buy one and it'll be like Ooh, one coffee bean it'll be great um, it doesn't cost you anymore if you buy through my link it's just things that I have vetted and recommend um, so okay just want this to burn I don't know how long to toast nine Tahini um, comes in a jar. There's some cans. I took it out of the fridge a little bit ago to try to get it a little softer because um, it gets pretty thick, kind of like natural peanut butter. Um, you want to stir it because it, it settles. You can see it's like pretty thick, but I really like the flavor of it. I'm stopping that because that looks like it's cool. Oh, that looks like. This one's doing well, but this one is a little, okay. All right, well, got them. Um, and I'm actually going to eat these straight off of this tray. The recipe I wrote, um, as written, is for two full-size naan. Um, obviously, we've got extra tzatziki, which is four of these. So one, this is one 7.05 ounce packet. So if you get a two-pack of naan, but it's very easily doubled because you can just do another can of chickpeas. Um, very easy. So tzatziki and then sriracha sauce. Shake it before you use it. And also, for some reason, whenever I 
use these. When I open them, they tend to just like, like a volcano of spicy stuff. So I usually open them over the sink just in case. All right, let's see what is the best way for you to see this. Let's see. I'm very good at kitchen Tetris, but all right. You see this okay? Grape cutter. Yeah, probably actually is called a grape cutter. Um, so normally you'll use about um, a half a cup of tzatziki for two regular sides, so it's a quarter cup each. Use as much as you want, but so about two tablespoons for these little mini guys. Um, just plop it down on there and then kind of spread it. You could also totally make your own crust. You could use a pizza dough if you wanted to make a bigger one and like do it for a party. Just leave a little around the edge, a little space. Um, you can cut them into slices if you want. You can just go to town, you can just like lift it. It's, it'll be, it's a little like top heavy with ingredients, so. All right. And you could also have the chickpeas ready ahead of time and just like keep them in the fridge and microwave them quickly and make them as you go. It would actually work pretty well in a lunchbox. So, all right, tzatziki. I'm gonna top it with, this is what my chickpeas look like. All nice and spiced and delicious. So just a scattering of those. God, I wish you guys could smell this. The technology will be there someday. Actually, my neighbors are Egyptian, and they make uh, the the wife over there makes the best um, food. And we have our um, I can smell it from our house sometimes, and it's incredible. So maybe she's smelling this. She makes falafel. I'm gonna get her recipe because Egyptian falafel is very different than other falafel I've tried. Okay, so so far we've got. The naan, tzatziki, chickpeas, tomatoes. Usually ships within two to four weeks. Ships and sold by Amazon. Hmm. Go to oh, OXO's website, OXO. Maybe they don't make it anymore? I'm not sure. Red onion. Again, if you want, you could use shallots. They're a little more mild. Or if you want to soak the sliced red onions in cold water or ice water for like 10 minutes, that'll help it not be so spicy, but I like it. I'm gonna do, this is parsley and cilantro. Put some of that on. Um, this seems like two, am I forgetting anything? Tomato, red onion, tahini, sriracha. No? Okay, so again, the tahini is a little goopy sometimes. I find some brands are um, thicker than others, but you do need to keep it in the fridge after you open it. So just kind of drizzle or plop it down a little. And this will give it a nice sesame taste. I don't know if you don't have this, maybe just a tiniest little bit of sesame oil might work, but you gotta go real light with that because it's pretty concentrated. Um, and then use as little as much of the toppings as you like. I like doing healthy drizzle. I mean, Get up close for the sriracha drizzle. Let's see. So I'll probably add more as I'm eating it also. And then I just put some lemon wedges with it because I usually squeeze it over right before I dive in. And that is it. So there are my falafel spiced chickpea flatbreads. Um, if you make them, let me know. I would love to see them. Um, I can't wait to eat this. I'm eating lunch at like before 11 a.m. today because they smell too good. Um, let me know. Tag me on social media at Big Flavors. If you're watching this um, on Facebook, I think you can hit notifications if you want to know when I go live. But I tend to, I'm trying to do Fridays at 10 a.m. Eastern when I can. Occasionally I'll pop on for an extra one if there's something else going on of note that you guys seem interested in. Um, I'm gonna put up a poll for the next live, for next Friday, the 16th of November. I wanna either do Instant Pot Spiced Cranberry Sauce with possible bourbon, well, with definite bourbon, you don't have to do it, and or, sorry, or Instant Pot Mashed Potatoes. Again, both can be done on the stovetop, but um, 
will be, I'll show you how to do them in the Instant Pot so it goes quicker. And that's all. I hope you guys have an awesome day. If you make it, tag me on social media and then hashtag Cook Big Flavors. I would love to see it. And I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. Enjoy. Bye, guys. Can't end the video. Uh.